Well, today is nine nine, so maybe that maybe that points us back to the moon or a little moon teaser at least. Oh yeah, mm, nine nine, yeah. And the, the the symbolic interest or significance of the number nine, yes, nine. Hmm. Well, let's see. We find nine in some sports, don't we? Sure do. Golf. Of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> Golf. 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 Baseball. Baseball. Of course, baseball. Uh huh. Yeah, we could break down either one of those two sports because they're both um, very saliently symbolical once you look at them, right? Oh, yeah. Lunar baseball. connections. Yeah, obviously, lunar connections. Baseball. Okay, so how many stitches on a baseball, on a, on a uh, official uh, league ball? Kyle? Oh, 72? No, well, you're the, you're the man. You're the. Um, 154. Oh. <laughs> Two thirds of the way. Oh, I'm not supposed to guess. I'm supposed to look this up. <laughs> well, that's, I was told at the outset of this that that was your job. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kyle okay. also doubles as the watcher. According to an article found on www.roanoke.edu, the baseball is hand stitched together with 216 raised stitches using 88 inches of red cotton thread. Okay, so. There are 108. Double stitches on an MLB baseball. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Yeah, there you go. 108 double stitches. So you got 108 and 216, right? Yeah. And the diameter of the moon, very, very close in miles, is 2,160 miles. Yeah. So there's there's your link right there. The first link of many. Of many. So how many uh, feet between home plate and first base, Kyle? Oh, man. I'm gonna make this take ninety. I thought it was ninety feet. Yeah, I don't know. It is. It is ninety feet. Yeah, oh, ninety feet. You, Russ. 90 I used to feet. play baseball. Yeah. And so then, how many inches does that give us? Ooh, ninety times twelve. Come on, calculator. One thousand four hundred forty. No. <laughs> I don't know. No. You got to work on your math skills. I can't. I can't math. <laughs> One thousand eighty. Okay. One thousand eighty. Now, 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 here we got to pause for a minute and think about. So you have a ratio going on here, right? The distance from home plate to the center of home plate to the center of first base. And likewise, from because it's a square, right? So it's 1,080 inches from first to second, from second to third, from third back to home plate. So now you've got this distance divided into these 1,080 increments, right? Mm -hmm. Now you think about the, the ratio of the moon and, and, and the moon to the mile, you have the radius of the moon, which is a ratio, 1,080 increments defines the radius of the moon. See that? So yep. that, yeah. <clears throat> and so now, if from the distance from home plate to first base, from first base to second base, is going to be 2,160 inches. And the full distance around is going to be 4,320. So interestingly, just purely by coincidence, it doesn't mean a damn thing. <laughs> but these are exactly the Vedic numbers, the numbers that yeah. the whole Vedic system of cosmology is built upon. And right. I'm, not, I'm not maintaining that that's anything <clears throat> other than pure coincidence. Coincidence all, takes planning, as Mike says. <laughs> as somebody said. <laughs> Melt they're, all, dance. <laughs> they're all processional numbers. Yeah. Yes, because the Vedic numbers are processional numbers. Yes. Yeah. That, that's the whole. Yes. So you've got the cosmological numbers of the Vedas. And just by some quirk, they end up in the sport of baseball in, in terms of these, the dimensional relationships. And they all add up to nine also. Yes. Yeah, yeah, which is one of the peculiar, interesting properties of the number nine, that any multiple of itself right. ultimately reduces back to the single digit nine. Yeah. Right. Yeah, in other words, all those numbers are divisible by nine. Well, that's not what I'm saying. Two plus one plus six is nine. One plus eight is nine. Four plus three plus two is nine. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like the numbers that are divisible by nine into equal increments. You can also add in the individual digits of those numbers up to get nine. Correct. Yeah. Right. That's weird. Yeah. Or you can eventually reduce it down to nine by doing that. Right. If you keep adding them up, you yeah. get, eventually get nine. Yeah. That, that process has sometimes been called Kabbalistic reduction where you take a number and reduce it 
to a single digit. And you, if it's a larger number, you may have to go through se several stages of reduction. Right. To I've, ultimately I've, resolve it to a single digit. But yeah, so like 432, that, or 432 multiplied by, raised by the power of uh, 10 times three, 10 to the third power, you've got the number of years in the Kali Yuga, 432,000. Uh, raised by 10 to the second power, you have 43,200, which is the number of half the number of seconds in a, in a solar cycle, in a diurnal cycle. So if you can pinpoint, which you can, I mean, you can literally pinpoint the equinox down to a, a mere fraction of a second, right? But if you do that, if you can pinpoint the equinox down to less than one second, because it is literally, I think, like we talked about, just a, a moment in time, yeah, mm -hmm. which which could be reduced to something almost infinitesimal, but still have just a little bit of duration. But let's say significantly less than one second, right? Then at that moment, there are 40, with respect to that moment, there are 43,200 seconds of dark and 43,200 seconds of light. You see for yeah. that moment on that one spot where that moment would occur see in <laughs> in in the in the diurnal rotation of the earth on its axis so it is built right into the astronomical the way and and you know so the question is again purely co it's purely coincidence we don't attribute any meaning whatsoever to this right <laughs> um well, the so, mind blower to me though is that also that i guess there's some variability but the Radius of the sun, it's 432,000 miles. Yeah, yeah, so if you measure the radius of the sun in miles, you get the same number uh, uh, as years in the Kali Yuga, which is the basis for the system of yugas and kalpas from the Vedas. So the Dawapara Yuga, which is twice the Kali Yuga, is 864,000, right? Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. And, and what then, makes that what makes that weird is because like <clears throat> for, at first you could say well it's it's based on the mile like that's those are all divisions of the mile, right? The sun is the that many miles in its radius. But then when you look how they arrived at the mile, and you're like, wait, no, that's still based on all these geometric uh, links between all these bodies. So, well, see, and that's the thing, you don't know. I mean, who knows really what was the origin of the mile? Right. It just, it goes back. I mean, you know, you can make assumptions about historical assumptions, but then you can go back and uh, find what appears to be the usage of the mile, even even back in the laying out of stone hands. Yeah. And we, we could do a, a, an, analysis, an analysis of that at some point, too, to see, to see how that works out. Write that because one down. Those, right. those <laughs> same numbers. See, the the other thing is that the, the, the 43,200, is the scale at which the 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 height and the circumference or the the not circumference the um, the perimeter perimeter of the base of the great pyramid are to the both the polar polar radius radius and the equatorial the, radius. yeah, yeah. Equatorial, equatorial circumference yeah yeah right and and what's interesting there is and again this is just purely coincidence with no significance or meaning at all but <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that if you were to expand the compute the, the pyramid by forty three, scale it up, scale it up yeah. to forty three thousand two hundred. Yeah, you now have a square that's equivalent to the Earth's equatorial circumference and its height. And this this is a hypothetical pyramid because the real pyramid, if we're talking about which we're referring to here, the pyramid of Cheops, has a truncated top. Right. Right. So, but we can, we can derive a perfect pyramidal geometry based upon the 51.85 degree angle yeah. of slope to base. So right. we can recreate a geometrically idealized pyramid and we can then proceed to analyze that particular geometry. And when we do, we find that, that the internal geometry basically presents a, 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 a very close approximation of the classical geometric problem of the squaring of the circle. And because it does that, what happens is we end up with the square base of the pyramid. If we use that scaling factor, 43,200 to 1, the square base of the pyramid 
now if you could take that and reshape it into a, a circle, <coughs> it would now just precisely fit the Earth's equator. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. <clears throat> Pure coincidence. Pure, purely coincidence. And they were obviously playing baseball. Right. When, <laughs> when they were doing this. Somebody was. Yeah. I think that's the point. 